Beauty, expression, demonstrating skills, innovation, and ideology. These are the five main purposes of art. Today, we will be focusing on ideology as a purpose and function of art. To do this, we would have to define some terminology in this proposition. The key term is, of course, ideology. Ideology is simply just a worldview or a statement stating that something should be a certain way. In order to discover ideology as a function and purpose of art, we would need to find the intersection between the function and purpose of art and the function and purpose of ideology. The intersection of the two is therefore to use artistic measures and making the audiences believe that something should be in a certain way. In other words, persuasion or reinforcement. Persuasion being that your belief and ideology changes into a new one, while reinforcement being that you became more firmly believing in the ideology that you have originally believed in. My method of approaching ideology in art mainly consists of two parts. First of all, finding the main ideology being conveyed through art, then using that main ideology to reveal different standpoints and conflicts that surround it. So the first question is, how do we discover and understand the main ideology that is attempted to be conveyed? The main ideology being conveyed is obviously the one that you feel like is attempting to persuade you the most. First of all, I'm a science person. I would like to approach this problem in a scientific method. Persuasion or reinforcement is something that can be measured and observed through neural activities and can happen through two ways, being logical and illogical appeals. Logical appeals refers how one's belief and ideology can be persuaded and changed using pure logical deduction and persuasion. A very simple and classic example is proving why an almighty God does not exist. The definition of almighty is that one can do anything. So if you want an almighty God to make a heavy stone that no one can lift, a logical error can be seen. If the God cannot lift the heavy stone that he created, then he is not almighty. But if he can lift to have a stone, then he is also not almighty, because the stone should be that no one can lift. Therefore, the concept of almighty is logically flawed, and thus an almighty God does not exist. Although this example has potential logical loopholes, many people can be persuaded by this logical process, and perhaps change their belief or people that originally that were atheists become more atheist. In a visual artwork, this logical appeal usually connects with the content, context, and background of the art piece itself. These elements would form a comparison inside your brain with your previous memories and information, then make a judgment of which kind of ideology you would prefer more than the other. An illogical appeal to persuade refers to how one's belief and worldview can be affected by emotional factors regarding a specific topic, and that there's almost no logical thinking involved in this process. Appeals through the five senses can directly and intuitively affect the psychological state of a person. Visual elements such as colors, structures, textures, and etc. can directly evoke emotions positive or negative, which would be correlated with the concept being conveyed through art. This kind of direct emotional appeal through five senses, according to the research of Princeton University, can be explained through neuro entrainment or brainwave entrainment, which is a phenomenon that brain waves will naturally synchronize with external stimuli, such as rhythm of music, which directly affects the emotions that one experiences. A great example is the following song, The Sacred War.
without knowing any lyrics, thus no logical appeal. It directly makes people feel exalted, intense, and emotional. That people are willing to sacrifice themselves for the bigger picture. And that the lives of individuals seem so insignificant under the sacred war fighting for their motherland. In visual arts, this illogical and emotional appeal is conveyed mainly through formalisms, which directly and intuitively evokes an emotion and connects with the content being conveyed. Both logical and illogical appeal then interact with one's memory from before. The new information either fills in some gaps of your previous beliefs which reinforces or overthrows the memory from before, which persuades. Any new information that does not interact with one's memory from before to persuade nor reinforce either suggests that the person is not a part of the targeted audience or that the artwork conveys ideology in an ineffective manner. Now, we have identified and understood the main ideology being conveyed, and we can use that to reveal different and conflicting standpoints that surrounds it. Being able to see the standpoint that opposes the main claim allows us to see how effective it is when attacking its opposing standpoints, and thus how effective it is when trying to persuade people that agrees on the opposing standpoint. Being able to see other standpoints also allows us to see how effective an art is to persuade other argument that do not necessarily have to be completely opposing the main claim. In logic, any prescriptive statement naturally includes denial. For example, school is a place to study is a prescriptive statement. This statement limits school as a place to study, thus also enforces denial, being school isn't a place to not study. For example, school isn't a place to waste time, or school isn't a place to play video games. Therefore, any action that isn't study is excluded by a prescriptive statement. Then naturally, a conflict exists and occurs, being school is a place to study versus school isn't a place to study. Then, if two statements that oppose each other exist, then the opposite of both statements must also exist logically. For example, School is a place to communicate, which is a compromise, or middle ground between not studying and studying. It is a new form that is different from both statements above, but includes certain elements from both of them as well. And since school is a place to communicate is a prescriptive statement itself, then opposing statement and middle ground statement must exist as well, which continues until forever. Since any ideology is essentially a prescriptive statement, stating that something should be in a certain way, then we can use the logical system described above to review all the conflicts that can possibly exist around the main statement. This theory is inspired by the fundamental logic of Hegel's dialectics, also known as the negative and positive. To sum things up, this method is consistent with two main parts. First part, the main ideology of art would be found through two ways. Number one, how the content of the artwork, along with the context and background, attempts to persuade the audiences logically. Number two, how the formalisms of the artwork, such as the use of colors, structures, and etc., attempts to persuade the audiences emotionally. Second part, the other standpoints and ideologies around the main ideology would be found using the negative and positive logical system. Then, how the artwork attempts to persuade and attack other standpoints will be analyzed to see the conflict, thus how effectively this piece of art persuades. Let's analyze an example. This piece of painting is called Kiss of Judas. To identify the main ideology and what this painting wants to persuade the audience, first of all, let's talk about the logical appeal. The pure content of the painting is the following. Judas is kissing Jesus, which is a decided cipher to show who Jesus is among the people. Judas bought a group of people, which includes the chief priest, Pharisees, and soldiers. Some are holding torches, some are holding weapons, some are holding a horn, running towards Jesus and his students. Jesus' face seems very calm and that he is accepting how he will be captured and sacrificing himself for the happiness of all other people. Towards someone who betrayed them, he still seems calm. His eyes seems cold and sharp, conveying a sense of disappointment towards the betrayal of Judas. The background of the painting is, from 1305 to 1308, 
Giotto created a group of frescoes in the Scrovini Chapel of Padua, with a total of 37 pieces on the left, center, and right walls of the church, which depict the life of Christ, one of which is the Kiss of Judas. The Kiss of Judas is one of the biblical stories of Judas, the traitor who betrayed Jesus. At the Passover table, Jesus pointed out that he was the betrayer of the Lord. Knowing that he had been exposed, he slipped away early immediately and went to lead the way for the enemies to come and arrest Jesus, using a kiss as a signal. The oil painting shows this very scene of the story. The main ideology conveyed by the content logically will be, because Jesus sacrificed himself for the happiness of us, therefore we should follow what he said and hate the ones that betrays Jesus Christ. Next, let's talk about the emotional appeal. The formalisms of the painting is the following. As a whole, the whole picture is in heavy color tones, dark blue at the top and brown at the bottom, creating a heavy sense of darkness surrounded by Roman officers and soldiers holding weapons and torches, a murderous atmosphere. This makes people feel a tense atmosphere of struggle. In this way, the painter places Jesus and Judas in the visual center of the picture while the rest of the figures are divided in both sides, creating a symmetry towards the central subject figure, thus showing the dark side and the light side of life, reflecting the sharp contrast between good and evil. The general emotion being conveyed would be anger towards betrayal and sympathy and admiration towards Jesus. Together, the main ideology would be we should do what Jesus told us to do and hate those who betrayed the saying of Jesus. Logically, the opposite side of the prescriptive statement being the main ideology conveyed by that piece of artwork will be, we shouldn't do what Jesus told us to do and shouldn't hate those who betrayed the saying of Jesus. This type of ideology would be considered as paganism, which reveals a conflict between Christianity and other religions. Then a compromise between the two statements will be, we should consider what Jesus told us to do before doing it and think about whether we should hate those who didn't follow Jesus' words. This type of ideology reveals a sense of reasoning, which can be connected to the ideology of the Renaissance period or Enlightenment, where people came to believe in reasons and logic. This shows another conflict between the compromised middle ground and the two opinions mentioned before. Then, we can continue through considering the previous middle ground statement or compromise statement as a prescriptive statement then the opposing of that would be we shouldn't consider what Jesus told us to do before doing something and shouldn't think about whether we should hate those who didn't follow Jesus' words. This conveys an atheist perspective and ideology. We can continue, but that would be unnecessary for this analysis. Now, after revealing the different standpoints that surrounds this ideology, we can see how the artwork can potentially persuade the audiences within those standpoints. For example, the for the people who agrees the main ideology in the first place, being we should do what Jesus told us to do and hate those who betrayed the saying of Jesus, they will feel a sense of satisfaction seeing how Jesus is portrayed as such a cool person that is willing to sacrifice himself for all of us, and also feel superior against those who do not believe in Jesus, who is portrayed as being ugly and sort of obscene. This will reinforce their belief through this artwork. For the people who stand with opposing ideology, being we shouldn't do what Jesus told us to do and shouldn't hate those who betrayed the saying of Jesus, we will feel a sense of discomfort from seeing this painting, as they are portrayed in a very negative way that even their ally thinks that they are shameful. And seeing how Jesus is calm and disappointed towards them make them feel regretful for their belief and thus change their ideology. However, the painting barely has any connections with the Enlightenment and Renaissance ideology, nor the atheist perspective, as they are not the main targeted audience for this painting, and not a part of the main conflict during the period. Seeing how this painting utilized techniques to persuade those who have opposing standpoints emotionally suggests that it is a quite strong ideological artwork.